America's only Irish station, Radio Irish, that's what you're listening to. Sean McCarthy here, and we're honoured to be speaking with Irish singer, songwriter and harpist Moya Brennan, and Irish harpist and T.G. Cahar presenter Cormac de Barra, who have just released their second collaborative album titled Affinity to World Applause. How are you, Moya and Cormac? Uh, we're absolutely wonderful, actually. We're in the wilds of Donegal at the moment. Um, we were released. We had a, the launch of the album um, last week, but we have a special release here in Donegal tomorrow night, and uh, coinciding with a, a workshop. That, well, this is our third year doing a Voices and Harps workshop, so we're in great spirits. We have set sixteen harps in Donegal. <laughs> Well, we're very excited to be speaking with you both here on Radio Irish and seeing as we like to uphold the long-standing Irish tradition of ladies first, I'll ask you the first question, Moya. This is your second album together, Moya, your first being Voice and Harps in 2011. How did your original collaboration with Cormac come about? Who approached who? And uh, what brought you both to decide, right, we're going to do a second album of songs together? Going back to 1996, was it 96, I think, um, when I did an album called Two Horizons, I was, uh, with, after Clan had sort of took a sabbatical for a while, I continued to do my own solo work, and I had Cormac's brother working with me, he's a wonderful guitar player who now lives in Philadelphia and is in a band called Runa. Um, but uh, I met Cormac several times, and I did this album called Two Horizons, and it had it was kind of a story around the harp, and 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 when I was going to bring it on the road, um, Cormac t- happened to turn around to me and said, "You know, if you want another harp player, I'd be thrilled to go on." And I was I couldn't believe my ears, and um, so he's but Cormac's been playing with me, and um, we've been playing together for um, going on ten years. And uh, so two years ago, we always knew we'd want to do something together. It was just very, very natural and very, you know, we just got on so well. And he's been so encouraging to my heart playing as well. But um, it's it's just wonderful being on stage with him. So um, two years ago, we said, let's do something together. And we did Voices and Harps. And uh, it was our first venture, and we were kind of a bit careful, but we really loved working together. And we always knew that it was something that was new and, and exciting for us. And um, so with this new album now, we really delved into writing more together and, and sort of really, it's, it's kind of, um, we feel really comfortable with, with the with the way the album was structured and, you know, with the traditional songs as well as the new, new songs and the cover version and everything. And it was just so much fun. We both kind of just seemed to just naturally be drawn to the same kind of feeling and same way we think about things. So it, it's a joy, a real joy. Now, Cormac, you are steeped in music and knowledge of music. Indeed, like Moya, you come from a family of traditional Irish musicians and singers. You are the third generation of Harper in the Dabara family. You first studied with your grandmother, Roisin Niche, in Dublin, and you went on to study concert harp here in the United States. Nor is this your first time collaborating with fellow musicians and singer-songwriters, with your work with Hazel O'Connor, Clannad and Julie Feeney, well documented and applauded. Tell me, Cormac, what has working with Moya on this second new album been like? What does the recording and release of this new album mean to you? Well, I tell you, it's been, it's been a wonderful, wonderful journey, a musical journey. You know, I started off, like I said, my, my family all, all play and my grandmother accompanied Herself singing, and my mother plays harp and sings. So I kind of grew up around it, and then I branched off into theatre and working with Hazel O'Connor, who was a punk icon. And then I grew up with Clannad, and now to have a chance to be making not only one but a second album with Moya is thrilling. It's, it's absolutely, you know, when you when you sit down and like Moya was saying, you know, it, it's a joy to play together. It's an absolute, you know, it, I feel so much guilty. I'm enjoying it so much. I wonder, you know, it, it's work, but it's not work. So it's, it's just such a you know, we, we go up around the music, we play it at home, and the fact that we get to travel and play music uh, for a living is just a bonus, really. Well, Moya, you are a Grammy Award winner, the hugely respected singer of Clannad, 
and you have been enjoying world success with a solo career for some decades now. Indeed, you have sung on most of the world's great stages and you have collaborated with many notable artists including The Chieftains, Paul Brady and Bono. You're also a member of the female traditional group Tea with the Maggies. Trina, Moraid, Moraid and yourself, Moya, all from County Donegal. And here we are now with this breathtaking new album of songs, Affinity, and your second with Cormac. Tell me, what is it about Cormac Moya and his talent that has seen you come to collaborate with him a second time? Describe what you love about Cormac personally, if you will, and his professional musical skills uh, overall. Um, well, there's no doubt in my mind um, that Cormac, to me, is the best Irish harp player in the world. Uh, and, and I wouldn't hesitate uh, with that at all because he's just an amazing collaborator. He's incredible to play with as far as no matter what situation we end up in and if there's a session or whatever, and it can be jazz and rock and trad and anything at all, Cormac can just open the harp and just play along with it. And, and by the end of the night, everybody's kind of in awe of who this guy is. So I, I'm very proud to be kind of um, along with such an amazing musician. But I think also, I, I, I think that it's really great to be playing with a, a great musician, but to really have the fun and the joy and the, the respect for each other is far greater than anything at all. It, it, and if somebody encourages you and kind of enhances you in your musical, in your musical ability and everything, um, it, it just, there's nothing but greatness in that. And, you know, Cormac, you know, I mean, there's so much tradition in his house and everything. And myself and Cormac, we're not afraid to sort of, um, you know, push the boundaries and, you know, and, and try different approaches or, or any, you know, anything like that. Nothing kind of scares us, particularly when we're together. Um, I, I just feel so comfortable he has my back, you know, when I'm on stage. Um, but it really is, I have to say, it's a real joy to, to be with such an incredible musician. And, um, you know, I, I love... You know, uh, you know, singing, but I mean, particularly with just the harp and the voices. Um, I mean, we have other musicians as well on, on the album, and you know, the, it, it can be quite elaborate. But even just the two of us on stage, we can do a show that you know that that sometimes can stun people because of the the, the technical and the, the use of our voices and the harps together. Um, so it's it's a kind of a real natural thing. But it, it, it you know, as Cormac says. It doesn't feel like work sometimes because we kind of really love being together as, as people as well as being on stage. So it's wonderful. Well, I'll stay with you, Moya, for a few more questions, if you will. Now, there are 12 recordings on Affinity, Moya. The album opens up with a short harp and vocal introduction. Talk to me a little about this piece simply titled Intro. How did that come about, Moya? Well, it's actually... the. the Part of the piece is the very last piece on the album. It's a kind of it started off as being a little trance music on the harp, so which we kind of we let the you know the, the the kind of the tape roll and we just played and and put in a little vocal here and there. We just wanted to write something that was kind of. Um, um, kind of, you know, maybe not new age, but modern and uh, kind of um, got experimental. Um, and, you know, we didn't know how it would turn out. And as it turned out, it was really, really, uh, we, we were very fond of it. So we wanted to kind of give that feeling at the beginning of the album to use some of it, to just introduce the album, to kind of, as, as if, as if it's an enticement of us in, okay, come into our world and let us play some music to you. So that really, it's, it's the Stuart Shee's track at the end that we use some of that. So we thought it'd be really nice to, to introduce people to, to the album with that. Well, the second track, Moya, is your beautiful recording of the Christopher Cross penned song Sailing, which was originally released in June 1980. As the second single from Chris's debut album, indeed, Sailing was such a success around the world at the time that it won three Grammy Awards for Record of the Year, Song of the Year and Arrangement of the Year. Christopher Cross then won the Best New Artist Award 
and sure even VH1 named the song the greatest softsational soft rock music song of all time. Quite an award. So my question, Moya, is with a song that reached such dizzying heights then, was there any doubt in your mind that you could rise to the occasion of recording an equally as brilliant version of Sailing as the original was? And what brought you to choose that song in the first place? Well, um, we, Cormac and I, when we were talking about uh, doing this uh, this album, um, I, I had this idea. I wanted to do a cover version. I've done the odd cover version of Joni Mitchell songs and the likes, and uh, not not a lot. Uh, I would be quite particular about what I would do. Um, but so I mentioned to Cormac the fact that it would be nice to do a cover version, and I was coming back from uh, from a concert um, in Cork one night, uh, all the way up to Dublin. So it kind of takes about three hours and I was there in the car and I was listening to the radio and I kind of looked at the radio and I went come on just just inspire me you know and nothing came on until I was a mile from home and um, this song started up and I went zing I, it just went complete my, my whole head just lit up because the, that album that the one that you, you're saying won Grammy Awards left right and centre I absolutely adore that album to death. I mean, I played it constantly. I loved every song in it, and I thought, you know, his, you know, his singing, his interpretation of, of songs, I mean, were just incredible. So when this came on, what was incredible about it was the fact that, you know, it's one thing talking about let's do a cover version, but when you're talking about hearts, you kind of have to be careful. You know, you have to do something that can feature the hearts. And when this song started up, I just went, oh, my gosh, this is so perfect for the harps. I mean, it's like the whole introduction, uh, you know, with, with, with the guitar, uh, you know, the pages and the riffs and everything. It was just, it, it was unbelievable. So I couldn't wait to tell Cormac. And he came in the next day and he thought I was talking about the Rod Stewart sailing. <laughs> um, and then, you know, I played with him and, uh, you know, right away he... He knew what I was talking about, and we went straight down to the studio, and we started to play, you know, first one harp and the voices, and then two voices and two harps and whatever, and it really was fitted like a glove. It was just, it, it felt very natural. So I wasn't afraid of it. I knew that it was a very famous song, I, I, you know, and sometimes a famous song like that, it's dangerous to do when everybody knows it as you know, just sung by one person. Um, but I think that we do it justice. Um, and I'd love to know what Christopher himself thinks. Of it. I, I did meet him twice, and you know, and he knew about Planet and that. So I'm hoping that that he does like it. But uh, you know, I, I really think that it, it was fantastic just to find a song that really suited the voices and, and but particularly the harps. Now, seeing as there are both songs in English and Asquelga on Affinity, the song Worlds Collide is the first of four songs on the album that both yourself and Moya composed together. Cormac, it's a jaunty, chanting composition that combines and indeed introduces the Irish language to the album's listener, with the main vocals on Worlds Collide being delivered in English, and the backing vocals being sung Asquelga. Tell me, Cormac, how did you both arrive on that balance, if you will, of, of what to write and sing in English and what to deliver in the Irish language? Well, there's quite a lot of uh, a tradition of singing in both languages, especially with Moya's work. I, I work with Moya, like she was saying, for over 10 years now. So when we, we look at songs and we're trying to find... Again, some of the suit the harps are songs that we try to find in our own little idiom. And really, um, you know, we come up with different things in both languages. I, I usually only tend to come up with stuff in Irish because I, my, there was a ban on most songs in English in my house when I was growing up. So it, it works well. We've had established a uh, sort of formula in a way for, for um, not being afraid of using Irish in a song, but sometimes we like to keep it in both languages so that people won't uh, completely have to go to the dictionary to see what we're saying. But uh, the rhythms on this, and our, my brother Eamon came in when we were looking at that song, Worlds Collide, and he was uh, listening to a, an early version, and he had a few suggestions. We went away, and it became sort of the structure of the song with the percussion and the vocalising, and then the Irish language. It just happens so naturally, like, like everything else. It, it, our, our little uh, collaboration seems to be, you know, it's such a, uh, a pleasure because everything, there was never an argument about anything. And we came up with songs and, and uh, 
lyrics in, in the space of a few hours. Sometimes we'd have a chorus and a, a verse written and a story decided. And the fact that it was in Irish or in English, we were conscious of not doing too much in only in Irish. We would pick a traditional song or two and then one or two others. But then we'd try to mix it up so that people can understand the, the story that we're trying to tell in, in each of the songs as well. Well, Affinity is a complete and thorough collaboration in the true sense of the words, because not only have you both composed songs together, you are both also arranging and producing the very vocals, harp and keyboards you both deliver. Quite an accomplishment. Indeed, you even play Baron Cormac on the album, the recording of which has seen the employment of the great mixing and production skills of a team that includes John Reynolds, Tim Oliver... Ashleen Jarvis, Barry Carroll, Paul Jarvis, Sheila Wilson and Richard Dowling, as well as a host of great musicians that play on the album. Talk to me a bit about the actual recording process, Cormac. Where did you record the bulk of the album and what was the process of working together like with yourself and Moya spearheading this incredible team of creative souls? What made this album, I suppose, possible above all else is that Moya has a wonderful... uh updated recording studio in her house and uh, her daughter Ashling is a, a very very skilled engineer and a performer as well a musician and it's really what makes it easy is having musicians as the as the technical side as well because they understand everything you want to do and they uh, are also they have a critical ear so if you're going down the wrong road they're not afraid to tell you so it makes everything far more it speeds up the process and you're not wandering down dead ends too often and it was so easy to go downstairs, like Moya said about sailing, you, know, you, you come in with an idea, you're not waiting to book time in a studio, you go downstairs and you do it, and you can listen back straight away and see if it's working. And when you write a new song, you, you can try a, a rough vocal straight away and throw it down and listen back and see if it's working. So the whole process, uh, we really, it, it, it all happened with Voices and Harps 1, the first album that we collaborated. Moya had worked with um, John Reynolds on the music of Ireland, Welcome Home, a uh, PBS uh, specialist won an Emmy actually as well as everything else but John of course Sinead O'Connor is, is his most famous um, uh, client and he works with Sinead he tours with Sinead he also produces so he put a, a shine on our first album so we knew that if we wanted this to be a special album again we, we Moya gave uh, John a call to see if he was available and luckily he had some time so we had uh, two weeks up to Christmas to, to plot out the ideas that we had then a week before Moya went away with Cranard in January to uh, start off the recording. And I was there with Ashton back and forth, getting harp stuff down. And Moya came home, she put the uh, the vocals on, and we finished off with our, my brother Eamon played, and Moya Granach, the fiddler, played, and Graham Henderson on the keys. Yeah. So all of our friends and family really made it possible. And I think there's also that, that, un, that unspoken understanding when you're dealing with family. You don't have to explain yourself half as much. So again, you save time and you save creative energy to focus on the music. So we were very lucky that our families are around us and uh, my husband Tim is a wonderful photographer so the photographs were done by Tim. You know, so it's, it's a, a real family out there but Tim was a, a, is one of the head photographers of NME in London for years so he's top of his, of his field as well. So we really we were lucky just to be surrounded by people who are um, our friends and our family but also uh, a top in their own profession. You know, so it's wonderful. Affinity. Why that title, Cormac? From where sprung the inspiration to title the album Affinity? Well, we were looking at uh, calling it Voices and Hearts 2 uh, because it really was a continuation of the, of the collaboration that started. But there was a lot more happening and people, one of the uh, bits of feedback we got from the first one is people thought it was purely just vocals and harp with nothing else in it. I mean, that wasn't the case. We had all our, our friends playing you know, percussion and flutes and fiddles and we just thought, well, um, we're trying to find a name to sum up the way the collaboration had worked and we were looking for one word and it was by chance we were looking through differently and the word just came out affinity and it was Tim said it or Maya said it and we all stopped and said, that's the one. It captures in one word the way it all works. I, I grew up listening to Maya and I was the first person I ever saw on television playing the harp on top of the pops was Maya Brennan the planet. And then, you know, we, we all happen to be how lucky we are, we are to be together making an album. And then the, the, I, I'm the eldest of seven, Maya the eldest of nine. So we have a lot, you know, a lot of things in common that are, that are and growing up speaking Irish and having music. So there was an affinity on so many levels that the word just jumped out and we said, well, that's the one. And we just, it, it, it stuck straight away. 
Well, I have noticed, Moya, that on the CD there is a mention of the make of harps that are played on Affinity. For our listeners here on Radio Irish, talk to me about your love of the harp. What is it about the playing of the harp and the sound of the harp that you love most, Moya? Is that describable to you? Um, well, when I was I was sent to a boarding school because, uh, by my father because he wanted me to learn the harp. And I kind of wasn't that particularly interested because the only kind of harp playing that I was familiar with was kind of the Mary O'Hara with, you know, it was very nice, but I, I didn't kind of imagine myself being just a, an Irish girl playing a harp and singing, accompanying myself. I, I, I just thought it was, I suppose, maybe dated or, or whatever. So I didn't take to it very well at the beginning. Um, but, you know, it was it was after when I brought it, when I bring it home in the summer and, and my brothers would be playing in my father's pub and Leo's and they'd be playing anything from the Beatles to a traditional song to a Donovan song to another traditional song and I had a couple of tunes in the harp and I started to play with them and, and, and then when I discovered that I could use the harp it's kind of you know, in, in in different other styles as well, as in riffs or being part of, you know, what the guitar was doing and weaving around it and different things. It, that's what interests me uh, a lot about the harp. Um, and, you know, I, I, and I loved then the sound of it. And I realized as well that, you know, the harp is such a beautiful instrument that it's sometimes the simplest things that you do in the harp, just it's, it's so beautiful. You don't... You know, you don't have to be an amazing harp player just to get the feel of what the harp is about. Um, and, and we have a lot of names of harps um, on the album, and it, particularly because the, the, we, we try and evolve harps that we've owned, but particularly Cormac, who, from his grandmother and from his mother and, and um uh, the harps that he's inherited, very old harps, and it's nice to kind of put the, a stamp on them on the album, somewhere on the album, um, and, and just um, to kind of uh, honour them or, you know, to, to mention them, uh, because, you know, they, they, are, they are a very special instrument, you know, and it's an emblem. It's, it's the only country in the world that uses the harp as, you know, a musical instrument as, a, as its emblem. So it, it's kind of you know, quite a precious, you know, sort of, I suppose, image and beautiful sound. And, and I, I do, I have to say, I do love it now. But, um, I, you know, and I, I love playing the harp, but I certainly love listening to Cormac uh, a lot. <laughs> well, the haunting love song, The Lass of Ockram, is a song that you have included on Affinity, Moya. Indeed, James Joyce wrote the song into his masterpiece, The Dead, with character Bartell Darcy singing... The Lass of Ockram at a party. What is it about the sentiment of this song that had you include it on Affinity, Moya? Well, when we, you know, from last year when we were, you know, the way we got, you know, sailing, the way we sort of arranged, you know, the, the fact that we wanted to do that, you know, we let things come to us as well. And, and last November, um, we were playing at a special. Um, it was a special dinner honouring Angelica Houston um, and her father, who you know they they had set up an academy uh, in Gal for Galway University, and the Galway University asked us to come and play at this special dinner. Um, and we wanted to do it's one of my favorite movies I absolutely love The Dead it's so haunting and it's you know that song is so poignant in, in the movie as well and so Cormac and I did say you know when uh, you know when we knew that for who they were honoring he said let's do something special for, for Angelica and so I, I just right away I said look well, you know the song and the dead you know let's do that and we did a quick arrangement of it and everything and, and you know there were a lot of people in tears by the time we you know we, we, you know finished the song and, and she was talking to us afterwards and said oh that's one of my favourite songs please you know you must record it and we said okay that's done <laughs> you know we we, you know, we were, it was an easy decision for us because uh, when I did, when I was rehearsing it and practicing it, I absolutely loved singing it. It's a beautiful song to sing, and I love the sentiment of it. And you know, it's a very old traditional song, even though it was included in the James Joyce um, movie. It, it, it is um, an old traditional song um, and a very sad song, but um, it's beautiful to sing. I, I absolutely love it. Well, are old songs like 
the glass of Akram fading from sight, Moya, and how important is it to you personally to keep them alive by recording them? Um, well, you know, I, I'd only do it if I could, first of all, do justice to songs and, and you know, if I love singing them and that. But, but it is, I mean, Clan had started off uh, in the 70s, uh, you know, and collecting Gaelic songs. Of course, we grew up with a lot of Gaelic songs from my grandparents and that, and my mother, and, and um, so we knew a lot. But then we went out collecting songs and um, doing it in our own style. And we were really careful not to, you know, there were certain songs, traditional songs, I wouldn't touch because I'm not really what I call, you know, what you call, a, you know, a traditional singer, a shano singer or anything. So there were certain songs that, that I wouldn't go near because it, it, for me it would be wrong, if you know what I mean, especially with the, the arrangements that maybe Clana were doing. But I, I think that because our love for the Gaelic language and the songs that we did do, you know, it did preserve certainly some songs and it gave, you know, a, a stage to Gaelic songs when there wasn't a stage there. When Clana started off, the Gaelic songs were certainly not... Uh, given a, any uh, cred at all, um, and we were literally laughed on the, in, in, in singing Gaelic songs in the 70s, and people were saying, no, that's not going to last, you know, it's, the Gaelic's going to be gone in five years' time, or whatever. I, I'd like to think that maybe we had a little bit to do with the fact that we were very proud of the language, and we did, we, you know, did record six albums of basically collecting Gaelic songs and doing them in what's known as maybe planet sound. Um, but it, it, it's, you know, and, and what's nice then about the fact that their first international um, uh, fame was was achieved by writing a Gaelic song, Harry's Game. So that was really kind of the cherry and the, you know, and the cake for us because we... You know, we we I still love singing in Gaelic, and it means an awful lot to me, and I'll continue to do that. Um, so I I think that um, you know, if if you believe in something, you should stick with it. But if it's definitely in your heart, it really shines through at the end. You know. Now, as well as the release of the new album, you were both literally swept off your feet with all sorts of activities. You were both conducting the annual Voice and Harps workshop in Guidor, County Donegal. Uh, There are tour dates afoot, press launches to attend. Uh, We marvelled at the sight of you both recently at the steeple sessions on St. Stephen's Green and again for your album's launch where you took to the streets of Dublin performing outside the famous Celtic Note records shop for an alfresco performance. And there was so much more going on. Tell me, each of you in turn, if you will, how do you personally cope with the pace of an album release? What do you do to relax, Moya, when you can? Um, well, I don't get that much time to relax. I, I don't need to. I, I mean, I love, you know, the older I've become, the, the more I'm enjoying being on stage and singing and performing. And, you know, I, the, the actual touring itself, you know, getting from A to B and B to C and everything can be tiring. But... When I'm on stage, I just feel alive, and I, you know, I, I really enjoy it to the extent that it is relaxing and it's so much fun, um, and it's exciting, you know, Sean, that, that people want to hear us and, you know, that they come to listen to us and that we still, you know, it's a blessing to, to be able to do something that you so enjoy. Um, I do come up to Donegal, and if I have a day here or then, I love relaxing in Donegal. But really, the music is, you know, my soul and my being, and, and long may it continue. And yourself, Cormac, have you found any time to unwind recently? Well, I tell you, it's it's like Moya was saying, you know, it, it, the, the music and travel are my two favourite things. So the fact that, that I'm doing them and... and uh, they're contributing to the to promoting the album as well as you know making a living. It's just such a wonderful thing. We get to, we get to travel. We get to be, when I come home. My idea of a holiday is going home to my mother's house for dinner on a Sunday afternoon and catching up with everybody and closing the door and not seeing the airport again. So <laughs> once I've had a day or two of, of that, I'm happy. So I always try to be on tour as well. You try and build in a day or two um, with your friends. I, I think going around countries that you don't know. Uh, couldn't get very tiring so we're lucky that many places we travel we have friends and we have family my brother's in America and Moya has family in Australia and she has family in England for a while so we always get to see 
your friends when you go away. And uh, there's one thing that Hazel O'Connor taught me like, when we were touring together. Always find time to visit good people and good places. Uh, and it'll always seem like a holiday. And that's the trick. I've, I think I've, I've been living with that for the last 15 years and it's been, it's been paying off because you don't feel tired. You don't mind getting off a plane and going straight to a show because you know you can do it. And it's always fun. So, I mean, I went off now last week to Los Angeles and I was, I was literally off the plane and doing a concert with Julie Feeney and then coming home to do Affinity. And it, it's just so exciting because you're with your friends and then you're coming home to do more with your, with your own music and your own friends. So none of that is really too exhausting. As long as you get six or seven, ideally eight hours sleep, <laughs> then, then uh, all is well and, and, and you can keep going. Well, again, to both of you in turn, if you will, I'll stay with you, Cormac, for this one. What is your favourite song on Affinity? And try to describe for our listeners why that song is your favourite. Oh, that's a tough question. There's about four or five of my favourites. I have to say Swiss Sheets at the end. Uh, as a, it was our, our most experimental piece in, in terms of like Moise, we rolled the tape and went in and, and tried out different things and we had different words running around in our heads that were possible titles for other songs and it all sort of coalesced into this piece that uh, it's it harps and it's voices and not very much more at this and it's really it, we, we looked at each other and we listened back to the, to the album and we go that kind of sums up the, 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 um, sort of the culmination of, of the last you know 10 years as, as we've been working together and you you listen to this and you go, it's kind of, you know, if you were to put a signature on something and say, what does this capture? We said, this kind of captures voices and harps as, as we do them. And uh, that's, I put my, my money on those sheets for that reason. And Moya, what's your favourite song on Affinity and, and why is it so? Well, um, I, I have to say, because, <laughs> because uh, you know, I... I the sucker for Christopher Cross and, and just love um, the fact of having the chance and opportunity to sing one of my all-time favourite songs. Um, I, I love when it comes on the radio or, or, or hearing uh, sailing. Um, I, I get a, a great thrill from it. So, I mean, there are several songs that are really I, I love. And you keep changing all the time because maybe you haven't heard one from the other. But because we're playing live now as well, we're doing most of them on stage and it's, it, it's really great, but I, I have to say I, I thoroughly enjoy singing and listening to sailing. Well, Affinity is certainly a brilliant album of song and music, beautifully crafted throughout, and I cannot recommend it enough to my listeners here on Radio Irish. And I want to thank you both very much, Moya and Cormac, for coming along and chatting with me here on Radio Irish today. Sean, thank you so much for having us on, and thank you for such a an encouraging um, uh, speech about the album. I mean, we're really proud of it, and we think it's a great album. So um, it's lovely to hear other people enjoying it as well. Thank you so much, Sean. We're absolutely thrilled to talk with you, and thank you again. Thank you so much, Moya and Cormac. You're always welcome here on Radio Irish. And we're absolutely thrilled to be playing Sailing, which is the first single to be released from the new Moya Brennan and Cormac DeBarra second album, titled Affinity. Radio Irish recommends you purchase Affinity now at www.voiceandharps.com forward slash store. And you can find that link right here on the Radio Irish Facebook page. You can also visit www.moyabrennan.com and www.cormacdebarra.com to get your copy of Affinity, www.voicesandharps.com. So here it is, the first single to be released from the new Moya Brennan and Cormac DeBarra album, Affinity, This is Sailing. Hi, I'm Moya Brennan. And I'm Cormac DeBarra. You're listening to Radio Irish... This is Radio Irish. Well, it's not far down to paradise. At least it's not for me. And if the wind is right, you can sail away and find tranquility. Canvas can do miracles Just you wait and see
can find the joy of innocence again Oh, the canvas can do miracles Just you wait and see Moya Brennan and Cormac DeBarra sailing the leading single from the 12-track album to be released. And we're very excited about it here on Radio Irish. We recommend you purchase Affinity on iTunes at Amazon.com. And where all quality music is sold, you can also visit VoiceAndHarps.com. You can visit MoyaBrennan.com and CormacDeBarra.com. We'll also be posting all the relevant links right here on the Radio Irish Facebook account where you can purchase your copy of the new album Affinity.